sharing Khan. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about Etsy services and how it is full of ports, but also people. Uh, I'm an SRE, but even when I was a full stack engineer, I often ended up in Linux guts and networking. And that was how I came to find that Etsy services has a lot of people in it. I was troubleshooting something with a coworker, and I asked him how he knew so easily that a certain port was used by a certain service. He mentioned Etsy services, and I dug it up and scrolled through the 13,000 plus lines that comprise it and asked him if he knew what all of these names and email addresses were about. Uh, he did not, so I finally got a chance to dig into it. For the next 10 odd minutes, we're going to talk about what Etsy services is, uh, where it comes from and who controls it, who these people are listed in this file. I wrote to a bunch of them. And then maybe most importantly, how you can achieve Etsy services immortality for yourself. Yes. <laughs> uh, to start, we'll go with some of the basics. Any Windows or Unix based OS has a version of this file. Uh, the Windows version is at C Windows System 32 drivers Etsy services. The Unix version, I will let you guess. <laughs> it is overseen by IANA, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, and it's been influenced by some work by the IETF across the years. Here's a little snippet of it. Uh, the most important thing about it, it is human readable and machine usable. And each uh, entry is set up like this. You have a service name, you have the port and protocol pairing, you have a little commented out alias, and then the part that really struck me, you have this line that's commented that has a name, an email address, and sometimes, most wonderfully, a date. <laughs> so up until August 2011, when you reserved a port, you would automatically get both TCP and UDP for that port. After the shift, you now only request the protocols that you need, and the rest are merely reserved but not assigned. They're just kept for a rainy day in case uh, port real estate dwindles drastically. Now, if you go through the first 500-odd lines of Etsy services, there are a lot of familiar faces. Uh, SSH is assigned port 22, but it also has an author whose name is Tatu Ilanen. Uh, his bio includes a lot of pretty normal information for someone who's listed this far up in this file. He designed the SSH protocol, but he also authored several RFCs, and he wrote the IETF standards on SSH. Fewer people, I suspect, are familiar with Chipper at port 17219. Uh, I will condense a giant internet rabbit hole for you. <laughs> I, I wrote about it on my blog. It was wonderful, and it's very long. Uh, it was one of two competing EPER schemes in the Netherlands across the 90s and into the aughts. Uh, it did not win. One called Chipnip won, but it was retired in 2015. But it's still in Etsy services just because someone claimed it and it hasn't been removed. Then there's Octopus at port 10008. It is a professional multi-program transport stream software multiplexer. Uh, the internet has some great diagrams to explain that further to you. And then there's this one, which only 90s kids will understand. <laughs> so let's dig into ports a little bit more. Ports in their entirety are divided into three ranges, which cuts up the real estate allowed by 0 to 65, 535, the number allowed by a 16-bit number. 0 to 1023 are privileged ports, also known as system ports or well-known ports. If you run a service on there, it has to be root in the interest of servers being able to trust each other occasionally sometimes. Uh, 1024 to 49151 are user ports or registered ports, which is a lot of what we're talking about here today. And then 49152 and up are private or dynamic ports, and they are available for your ephemeral needs. Etsy services gets used by these five C library routines, which are all just generally in the business of getting a service name by port number or a port number by service name. For instance, Telnet makes use of it, which makes these two commands synonymous. You can give it the port specifically, just, yeah, port 25, man. Or you can tell it SMTP. It refers to SE services, and it's like, oh, yeah, 25. You got it. But the one I suspect people in here have more likely used is Netstat. And if you provide it flags to give you service names, uh, that's where those names get pulled from. So in short, service to port, port to service, uh, reducing confusion in developers, and keeping things good and accessible and clear. But who are some of the people in this file? Uh, I wrote to 288 of them to find out. <laughs> um, <laughs> only about half of which immediately bounced. Um, <laughs> these are from a while ago. The first response I got uh, delightfully was for the service that shares initials with me. 
uh, Big Brother at port in 1984, described by its author, Sean McGuire, as the first web-based systems and network monitor. Uh, he reserved a port in January 1999 after researching IANA's role in it. It took about 12 days, and he described it as totally painless. Okay, so I assembled my list of people to write to semi-intuitively. It took about 10 days, kind of forgot the beginning by the time I got to the end, which is how I got this response. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> from the only person on earth who really has the rights to write that. I wrote to Tim Berners-Lee. <laughs> I am pleased to say he was impeccably polite in his short response. He recommended, recommended his book, Weaving the Web, for more background. And if you like reading about design decisions at an enormous scale, it is riveting, and I really recommend it. Um, a thing I really wanted to know about was whether getting into this file was exciting. Like, did you feel, you know, legitimate if you did it? Uh, Christian Trajax of Digivote at port 3223 described it as a real yeah moment the day that he got into it. And I also wondered if people had fun with it. Uh, Barney Wolf of Lupa worked a few different layers of meaning into his assignment. I quote, I picked 1212 because the telephone info number was area code 555-1212. And Lupa, an acronym for Lookup Phone Access, was a pun on my last name. I don't know if my bosses at AT&T or anyone at IANA ever noticed that. <laughs> I heard from several other people. I thought I'd have victory with like three responses. I got closer to 20. People are lovely. And the blog version of this talk includes a lot more commentary than I can fit in here. Um, I hope you check it out. Uh, another thing I wanted to know about was how people knew what to do, whether you do this kind of work, you're like, oh, of course, obviously, I see services. Uh, the short version, as ever, uh, I suggest reading the RFC. But mostly people seem to have just a general awareness, like one quote, I was the network guy at the company, so just you knew. Uh, interestingly, this is, I'm finding, less socialized now, uh, in part because a lot of web-based services restrict themselves to port 80 and 443 because a lot of enterprise security software just goes like, to all those lesser known ports. And so if you actually want to get adopted, you need to get through. So yeah, VRFC 6335. Uh, this has most of what you would need to request your own port. The process is less common now, but it is rigorously maintained down to an automated page that just shows stats on every month's worth of new port adoptions and applications. Um, yeah, it is alive and waiting for you. <laughs> As for where your version of it comes from, uh, on most Unixes, the version of Etsy services that you see, it's a snapshot taken from IANA's official version at the time the OS was released. Incidentally, I found that Macs are a good like 10 plus years behind, so if you really want to be on top of it, like go to IANA. It's really interesting still. But yes, to the most important part, how do you get in there? There are more than 400 ports that are still unassigned. Your plot of port is still out there. There is time. <laughs> this. This is your visually not terribly interesting but very effective gateway to get into Etsy services. You just need a service name, the transport protocol of choice, and your contact information and a description. You could have your own port in a couple of weeks, and then you could be hiding inside of your computer many years from now waiting to startle nosy nerds like me. <laughs> and people are absolutely doing this. There have been a gob of port assignments already this year. So here's what I want to leave you with. Um, as ever, there are no computers without people or not yet. Um, <laughs> I urge you to read the RFC uh, just as a general practice because it's usually really interesting and these things are so lovingly tended. Um, and then specifically here. Uh, it is not too late to be immortalized in Etsy services and I beseech you, if you end up doing it, please let me know. I would love to hear about it. Thank you very much. <laughs>